The One Micronesia podcast is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Hafere, Mogithin, and in this case, Kasselelie. And welcome back to the One Micronesia podcast. And on this episode, man, I'm so stoked to have these guys. And I'm going to start, um, hopefully get uh, each and every one of them on a one-on-one. I'm be, I'll be talking to the amazing athletes who represented the Federal States of Micronesia on the big stage. I'm talking the World Olympics. So uh, in this episode, I get to feature uh, such an amazing talent who's put a whole lot of her life into what she loves and, and actually gotten her all way to um the swimming pools at the uh world olympics so ladies and gentlemen with me on the podcast today i do have uh tayana autumn adams tayana thank you so much uh, again for the time and thank you for representing the federated states of micronesia on the big stage thank you thank you it's been amazing representing representing the fsm i don't think there's any other country i would rather represent uh, you're from uh Pompeii, you say yes i live on Pompeii, but my mom is originally from Chile. So, and then you currently uh, live uh, in Hawaii. Is that where you live and study? I relocated to Hawaii last year, but I'm actually studying at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. So I, I guess we'll just get right into it. Um, tell us how uh, you first found the love for swimming. So when I first started swimming, I did not want to. My mom put me in it. She's just like, this is what you're going to do and you're not allowed to quit. So I did it for a few years and I genuinely hated it. And then about in 2017, I started representing the FSM. And then I realized, you know, maybe this is something I could do. And I just started to enjoy it, enjoy it more. Uh, when did you decide that, uh, you know, this was something that you want to pursue? Probably in 2017 at my first, when I first represented the FSM at the fifth Asian Indoor Games in Turkmenistan. How was that feeling though? Re- representing, uh, you know, having chosen to represent your country on, you know, it, this wasn't the Olympics, but this is something that's as big as the Olympics. So how was that feeling? It was amazing. Just coming from a tiny island in the middle of the Pacific and not, not many people know where you're from. And it's just like, just to represent them and put FSM on the global stage. It was just great. Like how long have you been swimming? I've been swimming for eight years. So I started in 2013. Wow. wow. Guys, I'm so you know, uh, let's talk about uh, your your family in Pompeii and and, and Chuuk. Uh, talk about how, how how talk about the support. How how's that been? The support's been great. You know, ever since I found out in 2019 until now, it's just like constantly like Instagram messages, Facebook messages, any type of way people can message me, even though I don't know who they are or where they're from. They're just messaging me and always encouraging me, just saying we're gonna cheer you on, and it's just been amazing. Wow. That's amazing. Guys, we're going to take a break right now. But when we come back, things are going to get longer. The talk is going to be get deep. And then eventually we're going to get to her experience of Tokyo 2020. That's coming up in just a little bit. You're watching the One Micronesia podcast and be brought to you by Docomo Pacific. It's better together. Gets better with more. Customize and save with the fastest internet speeds in the Marianas by adding mobile, phone, and TV to your bundle with Business Bundles Plus. Docomo Pacific Business. Work better together. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. Hafere, Mogathin, and in this case, Kasselelie. And welcome back to the One Micronesia podcast. We're here and we're talking with the Olympic swimmer. And she, 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 told, she told me this before we went into the... the and to the interview that, you know, it's something that she's going to take with her for forever. It's just, it's an experience that that is definitely going to, you know, help her and, you know, uh, something that's going to stick with her, that she is a world Olympic uh, athlete. Uh, so she's an Olympian and she represents the FSM in, in, in swimming. So we're back here with uh, Tiana Adams. Uh, she's currently right now in uh, still in Tokyo, about to fly out in just a little bit uh, to Hawaii to continue her um, education. So um, let's talk about. You know, talk about the um, let's talk about uh, your favorite swimming events. Do you is there a specific one? I know there's 
I'm not going to go into specifics. I know there's like butterflies, there's this and that. So let's talk about uh, the ones that you love and the one they competed for uh, the most. Um, so I love, I like sprinting. I can't do long distance, like anything over a hundred, maybe 200 that's pushing it. So I'll swim the, anything under a 200 for both breaststroke and freestyle. But right now I'm really focused on my hundred breast because that's what they just swim. talk about, you know, before you went to, to Tokyo, you re- represented uh, the FSM in another competition. So let's talk about how the training for you was back then. So the training was a, bit crazy I lost my coach in 2019 from August until December so I was training alone my hours were reduced because there was not enough people to take care of the pool and just open it and then from January until March he came back but then when COVID hit we lost our pool again from April until July and that's when I moved to Kona to go and train and then in between those times we couldn't really get back in the pool with our coaches so it was a lot of me swimming on my own and then this year, in January, we got back into the pool with a coach on deck with us. So I've been training with Kona Aquatic since then. That's, a, that's crazy, too, to hear that, you know, you, you had a coach and then it, it, there was all these situations with the pool being closed and you not, you know, being able to get in there. Because, I mean, every single hour you put into your career is, you know, it, it helps you. It helps better you in, in, in your career. So uh, with those obstacles on the way and then you talk about training by yourself, you know, it, it's hard. You know, sometimes, you know, we always need that that other voice to, to push us. Right. And you didn't have that for a while. So what, what was going through your mind then when you didn't have a coach and, you know, it, you still wanted to do something that you love? Um, how was that? What was going through your head? It was definitely hard. I had to find a lot of different motivation and other things. You know, I, the one thing that really pushed me was the fact that I was going to the Olympics to represent the FSM. I think that kept me swimming, especially when I didn't have a coach or didn't have a team with me. And I definitely had to just tell myself, like, just do it. Just go to training, go to practice, just follow it because in the end it will all pay off. Who's that? Is that your mom with you? Yes. <laughs> hey. Hi. But thank you. Crazy. Thank Say you guys. Say that again. I said thank oh, you guys. Uh, ab- yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was telling our FSM swimmers, uh-huh. you know, the more, especially from Chuk, yeah, the more that they're able to talk about the positive stories of, mm-hmm. of people from the FSM, but mostly mm-hmm. people from Chuk, it does good for us because we've been in the news lately. Chuk, yeah, has been in the news lately and it hasn't been good. It's been all really negative press but there's such a microcosm of the bigger picture of what fsm citizens are actually doing not just in guam or hawaii but Mm -hmm. more broadly right and it's it's unfortunate that those little negative stories seem to you know blow up and take up the most news space so thank you for taking the time to to interview all of them like, you know, you, you, you raised a daughter that, that represented the FSM to the Olympics, you know, so people don't know that. So I hope people, people watching this podcast right now and seeing, uh, you know, Tayana's journey and how, you know, she talked about not having a coach for a while, but she knows that she's going to the Olympics. So she pushed through. I think, I think that's amazing. It's a story that people should know, you know, because people, what people see now is what's on Facebook. You know that she went, she, she bared the flag for the FSM. She did. She beat her personal best. I think, you know, that's what people know, but people, they know her backstory and how she struggled. So I think this is amazing to see that, Hey, everybody struggles, but and then we we're all struggling for a, a great cause. So thank sure, you. Sure. Awesome. Yeah, no, thank you. This is, I, you know, it's a privilege. So all of it, right. To be here as a mom, right. I mean, mm-hmm. just to be here as a mom, um, a lot of moms, either watch it on TV or watch it in the stands, but to actually participate, you know, that was, I mean, good grief. Only people dream about that. And I got to live a dream. Um, But yeah, just to see your child make it this far. (laughs) There's no words. Absolutely no words. We'll be right back. You're watching the one micronesia podcast be brought to you by Docomo Pacific better together. It 
only gets better with more. Customize and save with the fastest internet speeds in the Marianas by adding mobile, phone, and TV to your bundle with Business Bundles Plus. Docomo Pacific Business. Work better together. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. Half a day, Mogesin, Castellier, and Ranim. And welcome back to the One Micronesia podcast. So we talked to Tayana. We talked about how it all started for her. We talked about her swimming career and learned that she had to, to overcome obstacles along the way. Things that not a lot of people know. These weren't put on Facebook. All that was on Facebook or all that was adver- that was put out, the, the promo for all the athletes was, hey, we have three people. We're representing the FSM. They're going. But did we take time to learn what happened to them? This is amazing to hear. I'm learning this for the first time, and it, and it really, uh, it really, it, it, it's really inspiring to see a young individual who has uh, a talent, and she pushed her way through, and she made it to the world stage. I think that is a very incredible story. So we're here with the one, the only, your FSM Olympic swimmer, ladies and gentlemen. It's Tiana Adams, and Tiana, let's talk about it. Tokyo 2020. I know you mentioned it a little bit about how you know how long you have to train for this uh so let's go when what was it like getting the call to represent your home your country the federal state of micronesia on the world stage as an olympic swimmer there was no words i just like i found out i read the email i just started screaming and everybody's like what's going on i was like i just made it to the i got the fsm spot for the olympics i was i was mind blown wow uh, talk about the training process. I mean, we, you, I know you mentioned it a little bit and then you mentioned how the struggle. So let's go and kind of get into details about that. So let's talk about that training process. I know you, eventually you got with the Kona, uh, you know, the, the Kona water team, uh, and swimming team. So let's talk about that. So we would do about two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening. And then for extra like land-based training, I joined a CrossFit gym, CrossFit Kona. And I would do about an hour of training and I would have liked to go. It would normally have been like every day, but the pool wasn't open every day. So it was just Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but we've tried to put as much as we could into those days. So those days I was completely wiped out by the end of the day. Like I was even, sometimes I was too tired to eat because I was just like, my day was just too full with training. It was, there was no energy to eat at the end of the day. <laughs> So that's amazing. Then knowing, you know, that you had to, you know, fly to Hawaii to continue your training, uh, to prepare yourself for for what's to come, which is uh, meeting some of the world's greatest in the water, in the pool. So you you, you took that. You trained hard. Uh, I mean, it wasn't enough. You know, you said it was Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I mean, let's face it, man. If it was open every week, I'm pretty sure you've gone every single day and, you know, put in as much work as you can. But, you know, it is what it is. It's it's what we're dealt with. Right. So you, you took that and you pushed to ex- the extreme. And then now you made it to Tokyo. I saw pictures. I saw, you know, I was kind of followed your journey uh, when I first found out that you were representing. So I followed you on Instagram to kind of see how the process was for you. So, you know, you flew from Hawaii to Tokyo. Let's let's talk about the opening ceremony. I think in everybody's head, the opening ceremony is the key to every Olympic and how it all starts. It's, it's the main event that gets everybody hyped up. It gets countries hyped up because they see their athletes walk and, and do the parade. It's, I think it's always amazing that from the first time the FSM made it to the Olympics until today to see that four stars flag flown and carried through the whole uh, track, I think is a big deal for everybody. And to have somebody there every single four years is a big deal too. So you had the opportunity to join the opening ceremony before we get to the flag bearing the opening ceremony itself. How did that feel for you as a young individual from the FSM? 
it felt amazing. You know, everybody was just like, oh, it's not going to be the same because there's no fans. But at the end of the day, I still got to be a part of the opening ceremony and just walk for the FSM. So it was just amazing. I mean, you talked about not having fans. There yeah. were fans. There were millions of people watching. I mean, there were thousands of FSM citizens watching and, and cheering for you guys as you guys walked, you know, that, that track. But at the same time, you guys also showcased the four-star flags to millions and millions of people watching NBC and the live coverage. So there were definitely fans, yeah. just not there, but there were definitely fans, people who got to see the you guys alongside our island brothers and sisters walk in and, and at the end of the day, we were, we were the most talked about. The island countries who represented themselves and came out and showed pride. I think you guys being amongst the group is just a way to, to talk about who we are as Pacific Islanders and what we are capable of. And you guys definitely showed up and did that. So amazing. So let's talk about it. Flag barrier. So you not only went to the Olympics. You had the chance to hold the four stars, the Federal States of Micronesia flag. So how was that feeling? There was too many feelings to describe. Like, I was so full of pride. Nothing, you know, for my first Olympics, I got to hold the flag. Not many people can say that, you know. And I was just awestruck, just walking out there, waving that flag. It meant so much to me. Honestly, it's a win. It's a win for everybody because you made it to the waters. And you not only did that, you were top four. If I'm correct, I think they posted that you were top four and you even beat your personal best. And it's also the FSM record, I believe. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you know, I was just talking you know, to your mom and we we're talking about, you know, how this and that and the FSM people being on the news and, and how it, you know, how bad people view us. You finished top four in the prelims. That's huge. And uh, setting a FSM record in that event is also huge. So people should know that there are many amazing Micronesians out here struggling every day and you struggling and making it to the world stage. So that's, that, you know, that's a win for you. And that's also, I know it's a win for your mom and, and the people of the FSM. So let's talk about the, the before and after feeling we saw your, I saw a clips of your video walking out to the pool, you know, as you know, as humble, you look, you look like you were so humble. You look like, you know, you weren't like all like showy or anything. You just walked out with your, you know, your, your jacket and everything. And how was that feeling? You know, even being in the same room as some of the world's greatest. I was definitely nervous. I tried really hard to hide it, but probably some of it just came through on like, camera. Um, yeah, I was just trying to do my best and race. And at the end of the day, whatever happened, happened. And it was big. Like I said, don't, it's a W for everybody. You know, it's beating your personal best on top of that. Setting another record for the FSM is huge. I mean, at the end of the day, we're working towards something big, right? And that's, these are the steps that needed to be done. And you, you kept doing it. We just, we just got to keep breaking our records and keep moving forward because that's how we make it all the way. And that's how we show the world that, hey, we're coming for you. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about it. So you're there at the Olympics. Let's talk about um, that, uh, that after feeling. So you're out of the pool. Uh, you got per you beat your personal best set the FSM record. Uh, how's that feeling walking out and, and stuff like that? Yeah. Um. I was a bit disappointed in my time because I knew I just could have done so much better. And just the way I swam didn't feel right. I've swam the event so many times and just this one time it didn't feel right. So that was a bit disappointing. But the part that I could feel good about is that there was progress in the two years. So much has happened and I've different things like reduced training, changing coaches, moving. Just with all of that, I still was able to um, make a personal best and a new FSM record. So that felt really good. And just to say that I actually made it to Tokyo and just swam my event, it felt good. So there, you finished off with uh, a minute 25 and 36 seconds. That's huge. I think that's, that's something that I know for sure 
that you'll be back to beat the next time. I know that's something that you might beat in your practice or you might continue to pursue and definitely, you know, beat. But at the end of the day, what's your goal? What's that one time that you're like, I'm going to make that time? What's, what's one goal is definitely to make an A time to qualify for the Olympics. So right now, a lot of the small islands got what's called universality um, tickets. So we did not actually qualify. We made it close, but we haven't qualified. So that's definitely something I'm working towards to qualify for 2024 in Paris. So that's going to be another three years, but it's going to be worth it. And I know you're definitely now that you have all your training and your coaching and you have a team of people behind you now. You're definitely going to make it and you're definitely going to break the record and, and, and let's go. I pretty much, you got this. So to close out this segment about Tokyo 2020, you, you went with your family, you met the other, F the, the other FSM athletes, you met other, you know, Micronesian athletes from Guam, from Palau, from the Marshall islands. You also met other Islanders uh, who came to represent their country. So let's talk about that. It's like, that, let's talk about you meeting other people and, I think at the end of the day, I think it's making friends. And I think that's, I think yes. that counts, right? No, it's, it's great being part of Oceania. You know, it's just one giant family. Like every time we come, it's Oceania. That's, it's never really FSM or Guam or Marshalls. It's just Oceania. And I made so many friends, so many people who are so close, like family. Like every time we see each other, we're just so happy. Even when we're racing each other, we still push each other. So it's great just to have them around. That's awesome. And again, Tayana, congratulations. Thank you so much. You represented the FSM to the fullest and you gave it your all. And I think that people watching the podcast right now, you guys should know that she gave it her all and she did it in, 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 in such a great fashion and she did it and, and she finished off great. So thank you again. We're going to take a break, guys. But when we come back, we'll definitely close out here with uh, Tayana Adams, your FSM Olympic swimmer. We'll be back. It only gets better with more. Customize and save with the fastest internet speeds in the Marianas by adding mobile, phone, and TV to your bundle with Business Bundles Plus. Docomo Pacific Business. Work better together. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. Hafade, Mogesin, Kasselelie, and Rananim. And welcome back to the One Micronesia Podcast. And we're still here. To, we're here for the last part of the podcast. We're closing out with Teana Adams, the FSM Olympic swimmer who competed in Tokyo 2020. So, Tiana, thank you so much again for taking the time. I know you are pretty, you're getting ready there in Tokyo to leave uh, for Hawaii again. Uh, but before we, we let you go, a message to all your supporters and a message to your country. I'll just say thank you. Thank you for letting me represent my, the FSM and just supporting me along the journey. I have to say thank you, especially to my siblings, because of all the sacrifices they made, especially this past year with COVID, just to let me train and just to take one of my parents away from them to help me train in Hawaii. Wow. And that's, and then, and to, uh, and then again, thank you so much. And where, if you want, where can people go follow you and follow your journey? Oh, um, you can follow me on Instagram. Just search up Tiana Adams and it should pop up. I think I'm the only person with that name so far. All right. Well, Tayana, again, thank you. Thank you to your mom. So, uh, you know, for everything that, that she's done, like you said, you, it, it was a crazy year. COVID happened. You had to switch things up. You, you, had, you finally flew to Hawaii to find a, a, a training facility, which just was there for you for a couple months before you moved out to Tokyo for the competition. So honestly, Tayana, we wished a whole lot of best things for you. And I know you're like, we're looking to qualify for that Paris 2024, right? Yes. All right. Paris, watch yes. out. We're coming for you. <laughs> Tiana, thank you so much. FSM is behind you. Continue to do what you're doing. You are amazing. And let's continue to break records. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, guys, that pretty much wraps up the One Micronesia podcast. Uh, what an amazing talk we had with Tayana. I hope uh, during these next couple months, I get to talk with uh, the two other FSM uh, athletes who are out in Tokyo competing for the different events. So until then, we will catch you guys on the next one. The One Micronesia podcast is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together.